Hey, what up, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Wayne 918, and I'm back. Y'all know how I do nothing but fire interviews, okay? Out here telling success stories, entrepreneurs, artists. The direction we're gonna go today is we're gonna discuss a little bit of mental health, and today with me, I have one of the most dopest therapists I know. You know what I'm saying? I've been knowing him a long time. We go all the way back. But y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and let him tell him who he is and what it is that he does, man. Hey, what's going on, man? Very nice to see you, bro. Man. Man, come on, man. You can't just do no regular shake, man. You know what it is, man. Come on, man. You know. They know, all right, man. All right, Frank, take me back. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, all right. Right. Thing all the way back, all right. man. You know how we gotta do this, man. Yeah, so this is this is my friend first, my fraternity brother as well, second, and just a good guy all around. Uh, my name is Julius. I'm a behavioral therapist. Um, you find me online at JuliusLPC.com. And um, I'm a licensed therapist. I've been doing this behavioral therapy thing for uh, 10 plus years. Um, I started off as a BHRS, which is a um, behavioral health rehabilitation specialist. Um, before that, I was working as well at, at Job Corps. Um, and I really found a love uh, and, uh, you know, just the excitement of being inside of this field. And then after that, I transitioned, got my master's, and became a licensed therapist. And I've been doing that for um, close to 10 years now. That's a long time. So you got all kinds of experience, man. Man, a lot of experience, man. I've, I've, I've done, man, a, a lot, like almost everything. I mean, um, I've done inpatient. I've done outpatient. I've worked in, you know, rural schools. I've worked in the, what we call, you know, urban schools, but it's city schools. Um, I've worked in... Um, Man, um, uh, girls in patient homes, um, just just a plethora of different things. Oh, and also the hospital too. That was the most one of the most interesting places I worked at. Um, I worked at the hospital as a behavioral assessment team, um, doing assessments, and you get to see everything in the hospital. You get to see all the different parts of the hospital. Definitely one of the most interesting times I had. As you break down for me, what is behavioral therapy? All right. Behavioral therapy is like an umbrella term for all the, you know, modalities and different things that people do, like cognitive behavioral therapy, just the different styles and techniques that people go through. Um, before I became a therapist, I didn't know anything about any of these things. <laughs> I just thought therapy was therapy, but there's been these people that, you know, really spend a lot of time and energy figuring out different techniques, different ways to do things, and to be very honest, most therapists don't know all of them. I mean, I'm learning stuff all the time. You know, somebody will come and be like, hey, did you hear about this type of therapy model? Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, nah, I never heard about that. So there's a lot of interesting things that are happening out there. Um, but for the most part, um, most people um, know about, you know, brief therapies, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, and these are just kind of like more brief-based therapies that most people do. Um, and then there's some really, um, you know, eclectic stuff kind of interesting, like tapping, people do like tapping and havening, or they do like touching and touching their face, and it actually helps people feel better. Man, I, I heard all kinds of stuff. What about, uh, okay, I, I see it in the TV show, man, and, I, and no one's been, ever, been able to validate this for me, but mm -hmm. is shock therapy an actual thing? And I think everything was a thing at one point until it wasn't a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, say yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Then they get sloppy on TV. I'm going to be out like, you know, just like any type of um, practice, um, there have been things that have been used in the past that probably weren't effective, but that doesn't mean that they weren't used. Mm -hmm. You know, just like some drugs were used in the past to treat certain things. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they realized... Maybe that's not a good idea. It's not idea the best thing, you know what I'm saying? Cocaine and Coca Cola. You know? <laughs> it might not be the best. How barbaric. Thing. Right, but hey, it kept them coming back, so I guess. <laughs> but they stopped. So it's kind of one of the things where. So so therapy is probably, as far as the technique, is, is like a work in progress. Well, m most therapists actually use a wide variety of techniques. Okay. Um, and most people are extremely eclectic, which means that if. I know that um, there's something that I can use in um, CBT, which is cognitive. I'm going to use that. If there's something I need in REBT, I can use a piece of that. If there's something I can use in Gestalt therapy, or what I like, I like logotherapy, which is kind of like a therapy uh, that's based in um, you know uh, 
people finding meaning mm-hmm. in the reason why they're doing things. Um, great guy, Victor Frankl, he has a, a book um, called Man's Search for Meaning when he was in the um, concentration camps. And he learned that why, you know, he did a study while he was in there, like, why do some people go into the concentration camp and they're, like, terrible, and then the other people are, like, living their life and taking care of people and, and can do it. And it's all based upon, you know, what is the meaning behind your suffering? Mm-hmm. You know, everybody suffers, but yeah. how do you, what's the meaning? So if you, if, if you become a good therapist, then you can kind of tap into different pieces, and then you can kind of use that um, kind of like as a modality to kind of figure out what's going to be best for that. How do you build that rapport with someone you don't even know? Well, usually when someone's coming for therapy, they know why they're coming, and mm-hmm. they're there to do that. Um, I always let people know, number one, like, a therapist is like your best friend that you can tell anything to without judgment, and they can't legally tell your business. So, you know, you, you just express like, you know, somebody can use that against you. Well, therapists really can't, because as soon as you leave, they can't tell your business. Uh-huh. Like, they're legally... Confidentiality. It's confidentiality. Ah, it's okay. medical, right? Okay. So that's your medical information. So, of course, there's uh, situations where maybe, like, a therapist might not click with another person. You know, every situation isn't the same. But for me, I just take the time to actually get to know somebody. And usually, I mean, this is some different counseling stuff. They have, like, um, unconditional regard. Like, mm-hmm. you just basically accept someone at the place that they're at. So everybody's not going to be in the same place. I'm not going to be at the same place. You're not going to be at the same place. But what I do know is that you took the step to even be here. So we don't judge people on where they are. We basically say, okay, where are you going? And how can I get you there in a decent amount of time so that you see growth? So for me, growth is more important. If you come in and you understand your feelings and emotions, but you're trying to you know, further your career, mm-hmm. and you're trying to understand how to communicate with people, Okay, I'm going to teach you negotiation skills. If you're in there and you don't know how to talk about your feelings, and we're just going to go to the beginning and we're going to say, hey, what are these feelings? Let's identify your feelings. Let's just figure out what you're feeling so we can get to the next place. You understand what I'm saying? No, I do understand. It's it's whatever you're trying to get to is what a good therapist is going to be trying to get to. What are your goals? Not what my goals are, but what are your goals? And how can we get there? And to be honest, a real good therapist, and a uh, big shout out to uh, my professor in college, Dr. Quinn, he told me one day, he said, listen, your job is not to be a feel-good therapist, it's a do-good therapist, because if you do really good therapy, it ain't going to feel good all the time, but it's going to be the best thing for you. People are going to therapy to try to get the most out of the quality of their life. Man, you hit it right on the, like, right on the dot. Um, And the quality of their life is extremely subjective. You know, I don't ever push anyone. If somebody's quality of life and, you know, they just want to work at McDonald's and, you know, they like to be happy and they just want to be happy with their loved ones, um, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. Happiness is happiness. I mean, that's the goal for most people. If somebody wants to be super successful, that's the quality of their life. They're not going to be happy until they reach that. Mm -hmm that's on them as well. Um, and it always gets interesting when you have couples because then you have like one person yes. and their quality and the other person and their quality and how do you mesh those things together. So you're absolutely correct.